what was your message today? Our first message was one of solidarity with the chief, who today is beginning his fourth week of a seven-month sentence in Castleway Prison, where he is in a cell when he should be out on the open seas doing what the chief does, living his life on the sea. Our second message is to get to a, a wider population the true story of the giveaway of our resources. And on a day when, in this excuse for government behind me, they are talking about Irish people having to work until age 68 before they can get any bit of a pension. It makes no sense that Fianna Fáil and the Greens and to date Fine Gael and the rest are still willing to give away 540 billion, between 420 and 540 billion in our own oil and gas reserves when we could have a pension scheme like Norway does. And these uh, figures that you were giving are actually on Eamon Ryan's own website, is that correct? The 420 billion is a very conservative figure based on Eamon Ryan's own website of 10 billion barrels of oil equivalent in recoverable reserves off the west coast and that means at $60 a barrel which is a fairly low price they're worth 420 billion uh, today or in the future they will be at least 540 and they will only be rising and it doesn't matter to the Irish people at the moment, unfortunately, how far the price rises because we don't own it, we don't control it and we can't manage it. And the government is continuing to play pussycats for the oil companies and coming down hard on the people in North Mayo who are trying to get this message out to everybody in the country. I was reading uh, part of the petroleum gas extraction uh, legislation they were talk they were discussing in the door last week, and a couple of the TDs said how important it was to extract the gas as quickly as possible. Why on earth do you think that they are in such a hurry to give away our natural resources? Do they see see it as a threat? The idea of nationalising. The people who are currently in charge in our government are either fools or knaves. They are fools if they believe the oil companies when they say that we must have our oil and gas because of security of supply. We have oil and gas coming in from other sources, the North Sea and Russia, and there is nothing that will prevent those reserves being used by us now at the moment but we have to have the money to pay for them when they talk about security of supply they have to talk about the security of income to pay an increasingly higher price for oil and gas the only rush in getting what were Irish reserves of oil and gas uh, running at the moment is for oil companies' profits. It's got nothing to do with the Irish people because Bertie Ahern and Ray Burke saw to it that the Irish people no longer own 50% of our oil and gas, the Irish people no longer get royalty payments on it, and the Irish people no longer get the benefits of any special taxes. So we don't own it, we don't control it, so therefore we cannot manage it. So it is under pressure from the oil companies that that petroleum bill is being pushed through the doll at the moment. Would it be possible to have a referendum so, to so that the people of Ireland could decide what became of our natural resources? When Evo Morales was elected president of Bolivia, one of the first things he did was hold a referendum of the people on the question of control of their natural resources.
And before Morales was elected, there was a 20-80 split. The Bolivian people got 20%, the oil companies got 80. Following the referendum, that was reversed. The people of Bolivia now benefit to the tune of 80% from their natural resources. The oil companies are quite content with 20%. And it's interesting that the oil companies, all of them, huffed and puffed in Bolivia. But Shell was the first company to break ranks and return onto the new terms. The only thing that's needed is somebody to play hardball with oil companies and then they'll fold. But there is nobody in that house behind me in there with either the guts or balls to take on the oil companies. The only people who are doing it are those of us in North Mayo whom they're putting into prison, trying to call criminals and beating and battering us. But we have kept going for 10 years and we'll keep going for another 10 years if necessary.